To talk more about pizza right now, some take their work more seriously than others, and that is the case over at Modernist Cuisine. For four years, they've been on a quest to write the definitive guide to the world's most popular food. Here are some stats for you right here in these books. 12,000 pizzas were baked, 500 experiments were performed, and 250 pizzerias were visited. All that info right in here. So I wrangled an invite to the lab, and head chef Francisco Magoya taught me the best way to top a Roman pizza. All right, so here we are with this rectangle pizza. What, what kind of pizza is this? So it goes by a few different names. Uh, in the most uh, colloquial conversation, it's called Roman style. Okay. But of course, if you go to Rome, there's like five different kinds of pizzas in of Rome. Course. So it's it's almost a misnomer to call it Roman. Does do they serve like pizza like this in Rome? Yes, but I think a more accurate term is al taglio. Uh, al taglio means by the cut. Okay. okay. So uh, typically, if you go to Rome, these pizzas are completely finished in a display case, and you can tell the person behind the counter, you know, give me. That much. Oh, okay. Or in some places it's like, give me uh, by weight, right? Interesting. So then they take a pair of scissors and they cut the pizza <laughs> and they reheat it for you. I love it. Um, it's and also, is it already baked too? And so this crust is already baked. Um, this is, when you bake it with a little bit of sauce, it's called rosa. Okay. Uh, which means red in mm -hmm. Italian. And then with nothing, it's called bianca, okay? But, uh, uh, which is white. And uh, there's plenty of olive oil on top and underneath. So, uh, and in the dough, so that when we reheat it, it gets nice and crispy underneath. Mm. The dough itself is, it has a, a more of a, of a moist feel because of that oil that's in it. So the first uh, that we're going to do is a, a an Americanized, uh, uh, I guess, taste for this particular pizza. We're going to just do a uh, pepperoni style. Always uh, a favorite. And so even though this has some sauce on it, uh, we always like to put a little bit more. Um, because with pepperoni and cheese, you have to have a little bit more of that sauce. But one of the things that is brilliant about baking these pizzas ahead of time is that you're going to avoid something that I don't like. It's called a gum line, or some people call it a gel line, which is that gummy layer of dough that almost seems like it's not cooked yes. between the crust and the cheese. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of that. I, it's kind of yucky. It's it is. a little slippery or weird. It is, and it has a, a bit of that, like, uh, taste of raw dough mm -hmm. that I don't know that anybody particularly likes. But yeah. uh, we're going to put cheese. This is called, uh, uh, we call it pizza cheese, but you can also call it just uh, low moisture mozzarella. So <laughs> this is, it's, it's going to melt and it's going to give us a nice, like, stretchy pull on the cheese and so forth. And so what you can do while I'm putting the cheese on yes, this I'm is happy to help. you can put pepperoni on it. Okay. Uh, this pepperoni is called cupping pepperoni, and you may have had it before. It's the pepperoni that, when it bakes, it kind of curls up. Yes, I And like it forms like a yes. little cup. And so, as it's cooking, you have the uh, like all the fat that is in the pepperoni <laughs> kind of like concentrates inside mm -hmm. the cup. Um, and I just think that that's absolutely delicious. Uh, so. I drink that. I yeah. love that. Um, so for this one, we're going to do, this is basically a plain base, we're going to put pizza cheese, we're going to do sausage, Ooh. escarole, which is delicious on pizza, and uh, what's called fior di latte or fresh mozzarella. I love it. So fior di latte is this cheese. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Right? So we're going to put a little bit of this pizza cheese in first. So no sauce. No sauce. Okay. So. And that's Truly another. A pizza. Yeah, and that's uh, you know you don't always want to have um, tomato sauce. It doesn't always work. It's not always necessary, which is a very interesting question because when we're trying to answer the question, it's like, well, what is pizza? Yeah, what makes a pizza? It's a philosophical question. You, if there's no sauce. Is it exactly. Still a pizza? <laughs> it's like so then you can't you can't use that as an answer. You can't say, mm. well, it has to have tomato sauce. Well, this is going to be pizza and we're not putting any sauce on That's it. That's a so. very good point. So you can put this cheese on too, and in fact, okay. if you want, what we can do is we can what turn is the, it. What is the rate of spread on this cheese? Like how? So let me show you what I would do. Okay. I would just take some of this, and I want to think of this as, um, you, you could get as whimsical as you want. Okay, I'll start on this side. <laughs> and you see, I'm, I'm just giving it some room to breathe because it is going to melt. Okay. So what this is, is escarole. Escarole. And escarole is a hearty 
uh, vegetable that's in the lettuce family. Mm -hmm. And by hearty, I mean it, this is going to bake beautifully. It's not going to turn too mush. It's mm -hmm. not really going to lose its color. But it has a bitterness that just goes so well with this like milky cheese, mm -hmm. with the sausage. Also notice that the sausage that went on here, we've already cooked it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because if we just bake it like that, it might just, it might, it'll cook, but it'll just kind of steam. It yeah. won't brown. It won't have like the delicious taste. A little bit. Right. So this has some of the browning on the surface. It, the fat has been rendered out too. So it, it right now, it can only get better. You're probably hungry right now. Sorry about that. But check this out. These books are amazing. They're gigantic and they have things like octopus tofu and lotus root pizza. Oh my goodness. We actually did five pizzas today. They were all amazing. But my favorite had to be the arugula with goat cheese, figs, and hazelnuts. Oh my goodness. Mm. By the way, I asked Chef what his least favorite topping was. It was bananas. Yes, one pizzeria in Argentina did just that. Now later in the show, we're gonna find out more about how this guide came to be and why they named Portland the best pizza city in the nation.